How is everybody? This is Making Memories with Melody, and I have a box, and all of us end up with boxes. I actually am a box hoarder, so it makes sense that I would have a box because I have lots and lots and lots of boxes. So, but what I'd like to do is show you how I'm going to alter this box. I've done this uh, another time on video, and it went really well. And I thought I would do it again in a different way so we could try um, more mixed media. Mixed media with Melody over here on YouTube is every Saturday night. We call it in the group of uh, newbie junk journal makers. We call it uh, girls night. Grab a cup of tea, a glass of wine, a cup of uh, coffee, glass of water, whatever it is that works for you. And then we'll sit and chat. And I do interact because I'm live. This is not Memorex. So because I'm live, I can answer questions and or, um, you know, get things going that uh, we can alter what might have happened if we communicate with each other, right? So I have uh, the top of a paper pack that was a 12 by 18. So they're really long and there's a lot of them. And I have them, and I was almost, I mean, I probably could have cut out ATC coins or ATC bases out of it, but I was almost to the point where I was going to throw it away. And then I thought, nope, Melody, that is not what we do here in this workroom. We make something out of nothing. So I thought box and cardstock uh, paper. So let's decoupage and get a mixed media top going here. So let me make sure. This is the actual top, which is perfect. The last one I did um, was a um, Dell um, laptop. My husband had gotten a new laptop at work, and so it was a Dell brand, and boy, it was nice. It was a very thick, um, sturdy box. This one's not so much in that capacity, but it's still Still a really good box. So I'm just going to start layering up these torn pieces of, of a cardstock weight. I might I might cut this one because I don't want to pull off I'm trying to force it. I can always trim off anything. I can always pull things up. So there's that piece. Now I just keep grabbing these until uh, we either run out or decide to move on to something else. I had originally thought maybe a basket weave, but when I started tearing the cardstock, it just wasn't going to tear in a line for me. Hi, Kim. Oh my goodness. It's so nice to see you. I swear, Kim, you are the most dedicated uh, member. I just love that I can always count on seeing you telling me hi. You make me smile so much. I didn't know if anyone was going to show up tonight, and I would—I'm always fine with uh, just even one person. I just—I just like to have somebody to chat to. Although I do realize, and I always remind myself, the video is still there. People are going to watch it later, but it's just kind of fun to have uh, somebody there cheering you on. So thank you, Kim. How'd you like the swap this morning? Didn't that go nice? Oh, they were so lovely. I'm going to do um, coins again probably January, February, maybe, because uh, the coins are so easy and they do such a good job. And they're such a good um, way of learning things, just little techniques that, that uh, you know, even more so than tags or journal covers because you can get it done so quickly. So I am just gonna continue to jabber away and tear these up and put them on here. No rhyme or reason really to it. Just try to make it a decorative pattern because we'll go over this um, with either paint or metal uh, metal mousses. I do that a lot. And uh, I just like the look of it. I need to, and I had just seen it today, get a teal colored uh, metallic mousse so that I can make more of a the coins are so much fun and easy Kim says and Kim is completely right 
we did a swap in the group this morning and the ladies did such a great job i was so impressed and that's the thing is a lot of the, the people who do this are you know new new to uh new to paper crafting and so this is the time when they they can just do something simple and easy and learn and build their confidence and i just love that that's what we do over there a lot huh kim kim is now as of monday going to be a tier three member i'm so proud of my tier three members it is not a difficult uh task to get to tier three but it takes time and commitment and that's the thing that always shines out to me on the ladies that actually go through See, finally got a couple of metal mousses. Oh, rose, gold, and copper. Oh, ATC coins are a great way to start. That is so true, Kim. Now, the thing is, is that uh, you can take those techniques that you've learned and you take them over to tags and altered envelopes and the challenges and just start, you know, going upwards and onwards with the things that you're feeling more confident about. So I definitely get... Uh, get excited when I see the ladies start to get so creative in a way that they hadn't done before. Alrighty, so I'm trying to make these a little bit more narrow. I don't really want them all stubby and fat. We wanted them to be just a little bit more. But we're just trying to create texture in the background and reuse something that would normally either go, I mean, I, we have recycling here in Oregon, so it would have gone into the recycling bin. But why if I could make something fun out of it? Now, the last one that I made, I sent off to a YouTuber that I uh, got to meet in Colorado. And uh, she really liked it. So I thought, well, you know what? I know another lady that's coming up with her birthday. So let's make another one. And then I'll send it off to her for her birthday. And we'll just make this a theme, right, Kim? We'll sit here on Saturday nights or during the group and we'll make fun things and send them to people for their birthdays. And how fun would that be? Just a joyous way of paying it forward and getting to craft at the same time. I am Kim. Good, good point, Kim. Thank you. Let me show you. Kim knows how this works. So uh, I am using matte gel from Hobby Lobby. It's Master's Touch, and I got it for $19.99 with the 40% off coupon. You can also find a lot of their products, the Master's Touch, 50% uh, off. And so if you can, you'll want to get it when you can find it at that price because uh, the better buy you get, the longer your money for crafts will, will last, right? <laughs> That's the way it is for me anyways. Got to make your, your dollar go as far as you can. Okay, so I've cross-hatched this a bit. I just wanted uh, not to have lines, just lines up and down. So now her favorite color, the lady that I'm thinking about, right? is purple so i'm gonna have to figure out how to do this in a purple and so now that i you know and i know that i need to think about my decorations and how to turn them more feminine rather than just uh you know maybe grungy or um now well, let's see grungy or vintage necessarily um, i'm gonna put that in water which i spilt the water earlier so it's all over the place you got some matte gel that you just, oh, you got some and you love it. Yes, it's the best, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Now, see, I had this one. I had a door hanger that I could use and I still have some of this. But what I want to do is show you this. I went into my container. I have a container that I use to put my, uh, my uh, stuff that I use for um, mixed media. I save certain things that I think, ah, that would go better in mixed media than it would necessarily on a journal. So, no, not that one. Boy, that one's a good one. Let's see if I can get that out of there. That's a nice. Let's see if I can do this. It's a nice uh, little hair clip. Yeah, I'll keep that one. I won't leave that on there. Now, this one, no, again, that one should stay over there. But these, I got these specifically for this, so I could use those. Um, this. Uh, could have that part cut off, although that's that looks almost vintage. 35 years. Wonder how long Disney Frontierland. Is that what it says? I'll have to research that. But I had these and this. There was a couple. There was a couple of these little square ones, and then all of these shapes here. But I don't want to lose my background, so I have to be careful. So 
I have some circles. I have a frame. I like the frame. But I think I might do that last and then put something in it that would be beautiful. So I'll do that last. But I can leave it there so I know where I'm going to put it. All right, so I'm going to probably put it right there. I have um, some bracelets. I thought I had more than one. Here they are. Oh, there's even a little chain on one of these. Nope, it's just tangled up in there. So I had these bracelets. And that. And I had these metal pieces. I had a button. Um, those. That. So I don't know. What do you think? I even have, this looks like it's probably a cigar. I don't know. I kind of like the idea of that up there. And I don't know if I want to put anything down here. I might just leave the background down here. What do you think, Kim? Do you like this all right? Um, if we put this all on here and then maybe we painted the whole thing purple and then did silver highlights? Or what could we do that would make it? Now, this is... That's actually metal, but I don't think it's a big deal. I think it'd be fine to go ahead and use that. I had this, but that's just too big because I didn't I don't really want to cover up the background. And I thought I had two of these, but I've lost one. But that's okay. It happens for me. It's lucky that I could find anything that I'm actually looking for. So I like this. I kind of like the way this came together. So let me um start doing some glue on there. What's the best thing to use? Let's use this. Let's go ahead and start by getting, and these are the bracelets that I was getting, Kim, out of the, um, the blue box from the Goodwill. You know what I'm talking about? So I would, uh, and I tried today, they were supposed to get more uh, at 9 a.m. today, and I, I set an alarm and everything, but it didn't happen. Or was that yesterday? Anyways, um, to get a whole thing of jewelry, shoebox full of jewelry, basically, for $19.99. And so I did get one, but I was going to get another. That's where all these bracelets are from. So I'm going to try to do these together. Together, together. Because I kind of like them mixed up like that. Yeah. So I got to get this where it hits the base the most and get it to adhere. Get a lot of the matte gel on there. Try not to keep moving it around so much. So I'm going to have to let this all dry once I get done. Okay, stop. Definitely it's something that you have to use enough matte gel to adhere to the base. That's just the way it is. You have to use a ton, a ton of glue. Let's put some glue underneath this. Has anyone uh, that ends up watching this watched um, on the few can? Yes, the hard, hardest part is waiting for everything to dry. That is, and you know, I've done this so many times. Sometimes um, I will do this and then I will let it dry and I forget to go back and do anything more with it because I've moved on to so many other projects. But this one, um, I, I think I need to get it done by November 4th. So I think that's when she said her birthday was. And I thought the group would like to, to uh, watch uh, it get made and then send it off to somebody. She's actually local here in Oregon. So that's why it's exciting too. Okay. So it doesn't have to be adhered on every single uh, inch of it, but it does have to stop moving around, huh? Okay. So we have this there, that there, then we're going to put this on here. more underneath this edge. So that might hold it. And then we have this one. Put that 
stick on there and then I'll see what I can do. The most important thing is that it's adhered and then I'll figure out the aesthetic of it. This stuff is the best glue and a sealer. It does amazing things. Depends on how you're trying to use it. Hi, Kimberly. Oh my goodness. Um, luckily, it all just washes off of them. This has got the gel coat on top of uh, the, uh, so the cat eye. And it all just washes off for me or peels off. But um, I think it's because of the gel coating on top. So I'm trying to get some of this out of the intricate details of my piece here because I, I don't want to ruin the aesthetic of that. It's a beautiful piece. And I'm trying to get some of the paintbrush marks out if I can because I don't want those to be obvious when I'm doing my um, highlighting. It'll show up later when I'm doing my muddles or uh, highlights, whichever I do. Okay, so now we have those. They're on there. They're going to have to dry. So we kind of have, I got to do something up here because there's one, two, three, just two. There's got to be something up here. So I'm wondering, I don't know if I want to do like that or if I want to do this one or I could do, I just don't really kind of like that one so far. That one just hasn't grabbed me and I'm not liking that. So it might be one of those buttons, ladies, just one of those simple buttons. But let me see if I can find oh, my uh, wire cutters. Those are pliers, but they'll just get me started. I had to have so many tools down here to do my job. Then my husband, that's not wire cutters. Then my husband says to me, where's my pliers? I'm like, those are my pliers. Don't even try. So let's see. So I just cut it off and if it flies it flies it close my eyes now see this is going to want to make this this is what came off i knew i felt something moving but the rest of it seems to want to stay in place okay so i'm going to just put a little bit of glue right there well i can hear the rain outside that was weird oh <laughs> a little bit of glue popped up out of there okay so my brush now We'll pull all of this. There we go. That helps a little bit. Probably wouldn't hurt to do one more. That's four. Four is it's usually an odd number. Has anyone heard of that? Um, I learned that in floral design. You want to do um, focal points in threes or fives or sevens. Oh. Go. Okay, so cut the back off of that one. Put the glue on there, and we'll put this one right here. Okay, so now once I find, I might, I'm wondering if I might leave this brown and I could highlight with a little bit of gold. I'll find a really pretty image to put inside there. I don't know. I'm going to think about it a little bit. You know how it is. So, but this part just all needs to dry. And this, like I said, this is all that's just going to stay right there. It's not going to move. It'll dry and uh, become uh, pretty, pretty sturdy, actually. Looks like that might move a bit, no matter what I do, because it's uh, not attached to that one. But I don't think it'll end up doing anything that'll hurt the piece. Don't think, don't think. Okay. There we go. Now we have that browned that needs to dry. And I can show you a couple other things to give you. Let me see. I just noticed that this one's lifting up right over here. Don't want any of that happening. No shenanigans. Okay. Got that. Back down. Now, set this aside. And I'll show you this piece. This is what I made for my family's Thanksgiving recipes. Keep track of that. Move this over. And actually, let me put the lid back on here. So 
So this is a uh, vintage um, photo album and I gessoed it with black gesso. Then I put a mesh on there with um, the, the um, matte gel. Then these uh, felt leaves from the Dollar Tree. And this is the silver tin harvest sign from the, from the Dollar Tree. And then these are um, brads that I had. So I, I decorated this. Then I, when I was done, I took some uh, modeling paste through, or actually it was a thick gel through a stencil and stenciled this and then dry brushed it with the metals, right? So then on the inside, I made, uh, I made it this color and then I made pockets and I was gonna use these to separate my categories. I hadn't got that far yet, but that's, this is all so that I can do my fall recipes. And so if I have a page that's printed out, right, or a recipe out of a magazine that I tore out and I go like this, there's my recipe. And then I just turn them and turn them and I can do pies, I can do uh, casseroles, I can do, uh, you know, whatever, salads. And so that's, I was excited about this because I worked on this for quite a while before I actually got it done. And then I just got it done recently. And uh, let me show you the back. The back has this little decoration here and then another pocket, right? So this is going upstairs and I'm going to be, um, all my recipes are going to be put in here and I'm excited about it. I don't know why that's giving me fits. There we go. Okay, so this is a mixed media cover and it is in the fall theme, but it, the reason I was showing it is because you can see that this texturizing um, is a Dollar Tree item. This is a Dollar Tree item. This is a Dollar Tree item. This was a Goodwill item. So this is a very inexpensive project that you don't have to go put um, a lot of money into, right? So that's that's that, and then, um, and I'm not gonna be able to figure out where it is at the second because I moved everything into a box, but uh, I do have a couple other projects that um, I, I'm gonna make my uh, personal journal here pretty soon. And, uh, but for right now, I um, wanted to show you, this is the folio that I got from Gail Agostinelli when I was in Colorado, let me turn it over. And, uh, I've been, I've been, I got a hold of these, which I bought from Tsunami Rose, these little um, packets of die cuts. And so I've been separating them out inside of my new folio and I've been having such a fun time with that. And uh, I have to admit, they're just so fun and I'm gonna have to figure out some ideas. They're, they're gonna inspire me because right this second, my brain is thinking Christmas, but I did end up ordering the Christmas ones too. So, and I have two kits for sure to put together for a couple of ladies that are in the group. And then I'm going to put some in the store. But I am so ready for Christmas, guys. I really am. It's just the idea of it just makes me smile. I'm ready. I'm actually, it's not even, it's not even Halloween. And I am ready to uh, decorate for Christmas. That's how far I'm ready. I'm just so into the whole getting ready for Christmas. Oh, this one's so beautiful. I'm making a, a Christmas digital kit for the design team. And uh, boy, these look vintage. These are beautiful. These are just wonderful. So yeah, there's so many, there's so many ways to store our ephemera. There's so many different types of ephemera. And uh, I wanted to make one of these ephemera uh, folios and I just never got around to it and I'm so excited that I got a hold of this one because I probably still will never get a hold of one or get the time to make one and so to have hers is so sweet and I will just smile every time I look in here at all these little treasures so between Gail Agostinelli and Tsunami Rose I have a treasure trove now and I'm so excited about it you know what I might put these in there because I don't really have another plan for them and they would work well in this case, wouldn't they? Yeah, I think I'll do that. Has anyone else been organizing their stuff or purging or working on that uh, side of things? Because I'll tell you, uh, doesn't it sneak up on you? 
sneaks up on you. So, and I also, and I'm not sure if I'll uh, be able to find it, but I seen it uh, not too long ago when I was moving things around. Oh, I won't be able to find it. Anyways, I was uh, looking for, um, I was looking for and found these um, botanicals that I was starting to uh, cut out of a, a poster that I got in Colorado at the Oddities. It was a botanical poster, a set of old encyclopedias and turned into a family search. Oh my goodness. Kimberly Smith, well you are, oh and Kim Greenleaf is almost done with her ephemera photo. You guys are going to have to make sure and show pictures because I would love to see this. I just get so inspired by seeing other people's accomplishments. It, it gives me the motivation because sometimes, ladies, I wake up, I don't even know what part of the day I'm going to get through. I don't know if I'm going to want to feel like getting online. I don't know if the internet's going to work. I get so downhearted about things not working or running running my way that when I do get in there and I get to see all the success stories and inspiration from everybody, it just lightens my day up and makes everything better. Let me tell you, it just makes it all so much better. So when we are done with this, I can say, when this actually dries, I can say that we are going to paint it a couple of different colors of purple. Um, she is designing her her uh, her craft room, workroom, whatever she's calling it, right now. And so I've been watching the video, so I'll know exactly what uh, what what shades of purple to go with for this. So that makes it easier. It's not like I have to guess at it. So that's that's nice, isn't it? <laughs> so and then I'll find something for the bottom here. Maybe maybe uh, we could get this just right. It could sit on one of her tabletops as a ephemera holder or something because it's a nice size box. It just would have to be something flat. But uh, yeah, I think that'll work great. I think that's going to be cool. And this is something that I always get inspired by Mirami Small Arts. She is a whiz at taking mixed media items, just anything. And uh, I've been so inspired by her to create uh, things that I never would have been confident to do before. And I just so appreciate that about her. Marta over at Mirami Small Arts is just a huge inspiration. But... Uh, well, I guess that's it, ladies. We'll let that dry, and we'll come back and paint it, and we'll have a great time. Project boxes. That's awesome, Kim. I think that's a great idea. I I got these. Let me show you what I got for projects, um, and I'm really glad I did. It's been working out a little bit. Let me show you what I've done so far. But I got a hold of these from uh, Totally Tiffany. And I bought 10 of them, and then I put them in these rings, the way we did the other ephemera holders. Uh, they're uh, like uh, book pouch, uh, pencil pouches. So, uh, but I got these ones, and on the front they have three pouches, and on the back they have a big pouch. So say this one right here has these sm three smaller ones, and then on the back I have the larger ones. So, and then I did that with my Somerset Studios magazine, because this is gonna be kind of my ATC coin uh, pouch project pouch I'm going to call it and so on this side is the Somerset magazine and the backgrounds of them and then on this side is some of the scraps that I had cut but I didn't want to lose track of so and then over here I just stuffed those because I do need to uh, I've got a mermaid uh, project that needs to go inside of here and the problem is is I never exactly know where I set things you know does anyone else do that or is it just me because if it's just me I can own it I definitely can own it but if it's not just me I would love to hear <laughs> that it's not just me but anyways I'm excited about these like I said I got two sets of them so I got 10 so five of them will be in with these rings and then another five and then I'm going to put some heavy duty hooks up that I can hang them on and I could label them if I want to, but basically because I can see through here, I could just uh, go by that. But these are the other ones that I had created based on something I seen on Lollipalooza. So three rings and pencil pouches, clear pencil pouches from the Dollar Tree. This is kind of my gothic um, assortments here. And then I have um, 
this is uh, just some other yeah I just have too much stuff basically but I have four of these and uh, and they're hanging up here on hooks so I can just grab them when I need them and that's been working out really well and then I got these bigger ones so that's been kind of the way that I'm deciding to start to get a handle on my ephemera and my bits and pieces of metals and and charms and jewelry and whatnot but it, it isn't by no means has it under control it's not just me thank you kimberly smith i'll tell you i have i have the fear that uh, i'm just the only person on the planet that's not as organized as i need to be and not as in uh not as in control of my area and my my uh, ephemera and stash and everything i mean i have a bit of a handle on it and then i lose it right <laughs> or i think i have it and then i lost it so it's one of those situations but thank you so much ladies for hanging out with me i had such a nice night and we'll come back uh, next saturday night and we will see how that dried and then we'll start doing purple on it or if i get started on, i'll come back and finish it with you and then we'll work on something else but thank you so much for joining me tonight and you guys just have a lovely, lovely weekend. Bye-bye.